Welcome back. In this lesson, we want to send this photo in a different way. We can see that we have the subtractive color CMYK and the additive color RGB, but we can see these are solid colors. And remembering from the last lesson, we probably could send this via GIF or GIF. Now we know our document size is 5.31 million, so we know this is large, so we do need to compress this. So we're going to go to File, Save for Web. We're going to move this into position here. Let me see if I can press the Alt key and then zoom out just a little so I can... Now, nah, I'd rather, yeah. Let me use the hand tool and move it back into position. There we go. And this is two up. So let's go choose our GIF setting because we know this is for solid colors, line art, non-photographic. And we went from 5.31 million to 90K. So we already know we're technically good to go. But let's go through some settings here. Now with the GIF, we have different types of coloring algorithms. You have from Perceptual, which you can see here. You press your down key and you can see the difference in Perceptual, Selective, Adaptive, Restrictive. You can see Restrictive, we have some issues. But you're not going to see much of a difference here when your colors are 256, as you can see here. And in this photo, there's not 256 colors. So when you're messing with the GIF image, you want to see how many colors do I have? So maybe the first thing I can do is just reduce the colors. Try 128. You'll notice that the color table will shrink in size according to the colors. Well, the image still looks good. Everything still looks fine. Well, let me try reducing it to 32. Now we can start to see some problems here. So maybe 32 might be a little bit too little. Let me select none for the mat here. But we did get it down to 40. So look at the GIF over here in the left-hand corner. We got, it, we got it down to 40. So let me go to 16. And look, what, look what's starting to happen. As you can see here, the red here and is, is blending in. You can't even see the red. So we already know that 16, we can't go lower than 16. So we're going to go higher than 16. And 32, we seem to have a little bit of problems. But we can change some things. We do have our dither, which um, basically mixes two pixels together to get another one. Um, that's a really plain term of saying that. But we can have no dither. And you can see here that it actually improved by having no dither instead of having diffusion. See with the diffusion? It looks a little, you can see lines there. So we can play with the different types of dithering. Uh, let's just see pattern. Oh, but pattern, see? One side fixes, but the other side, no. Uh, interesting. So what I'm going to go back to is no dithering. We can choose a mat if we need to. Transparency, I'm going to check transparency because there is no transparency. I don't have to worry about it. But if I did, I would want to check that so that way I can retain my transparency. Web snap is interesting. This basically um, um, snaps a color as close to the web as you can. So if I go here, it's going to snap them. But basically, these are web colors, so you're not going to see a difference there. So. Let me turn out. I need to go back up to 64 because I can see that these two colors were still issues. All right, now let's talk about some other things. So we know that there's GIF. We know there's different types of uh, color algorithms which we can go through. We know we can reduce the colors to reduce the file size. We can try a dither algorithm. Uh, we found that no dither seems to be better. If we have transparency, we would check transparency. We can provide a mat. Uh, there is none. Uh, we can um, snap the colors to the web as close as possible. And here we have the same settings as we had in the previous lesson. We just leave them. And here we have a color table. Now the color table um, is with the colors here. It's the colors you have here. Now what's interesting is, I'll show you something interesting. We have a menu here. We can select all colors, select all web safe colors. Only one web safe color. That's interesting. Deselect all colors if you can see this. Let me move this over. You can also sort by hue, which I do. You can sort by luminance if you want, or popularity. I usually sort by hue. What's great is you could even load and save a color table. So that's another thing that you can do. Let me move this back into position. And something else you can do is just kind of interesting. You can go to the eyedropper over here. Click on a color you want to save. Watch this table over here. See the square? That white square? In the case of that color is selected, let me press Shift and select the green. And let me select this one and this one. 
and then let me click the lock that will lock those selected colors so any colors I reduce it will not affect those colors let me go back down to 16 and you can see that the red disappears why did the red disappear because I didn't lock that color down so maybe I forgot so how can I fix that well I'll go back up to 32 actually it was 64 wasn't it yeah 64 I'll go over to this menu you're not gonna see it but I'm gonna choose unlock all colors and then I'm gonna go over here and select it so I'm gonna press the eyedropper press shift 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 lock the colors down reduce my colors to 16 not bad and I have the color retained see the colors retained nice and I got it down to 23k so sometimes locking the colors down on the color table can help you out also but remember the other thing that I talked about in the other lesson with JPEGs image size now a lot of people will explain image size towards the end but I usually like to go here first if I know my image is not going to be sent at 1948 then what was the purpose of going through all of this when the first thing I should be doing is reducing the image size here so let me go back up to 256 let me reduce this down to let's say I'm sending in as 800 alright let me use the hand tool by pressing either a space bar or let me just press H to move it into position and you see I already got it down to 19 K so I, I explained all these steps based on the large image when I could have just reduced the image size here in this application here and reduced it less than what we went through so I just want to let you know that there's two options there's many options you can try as many as you want there's no harm in try, trying anything that's the great thing about this whole dialog box which I love and you can look at four up and see it even further so let's just see ironically let's go down back to 64 okay oh not bad so I got got it down to 11 and it still looks good still looks good I'll go back to two up and see the difference not bad alright so reducing the image size which actually helps a lot in most images then reducing the colors I didn't have to lock down any colors I retained the quality with zero dither and I got it down to 11 so that's the power of say for web and devices now I said devices devices is over here if you were to click device central this would open up the device central application and as you can see here with the device central you can actually test how your picture would look on phones that is cool um, you can look at your display choose the backlighting the keypad um, you can use the original size of the image or you can fit pro um, proportionally you can also scale um, you can choose your devices and if I'm right oh there you go browse you can this is the I'm emulating um, the phone tiers but you can also browse um, certain phones and these are updated either daily weekly depending and every time you load this it will upload automatically but you can see how your pictures will look on the iPad and all kinds of sorts of things so it's a very helpful thing if you're developing content or images um, for um, um, your iPads and things of that sorts so in the next lesson we're going to talk about printing to inkjets